Okay, folks, let's make sure we still got microphone on here. It says we do, and we're recording. I have a new microphone plugged in today. So um, I had Bluetooth before and it was causing interruptions and delays and things. So I've got a microphone we're gonna be testing out today. Now, depending on how long this is, how long it goes, because uh, there's a lot of pages here. I may break it up. Um, I'm making note of what time I'm starting it right now at 7.23. So we'll see how long this goes uh, for purposes of time. It may have to be broken into two videos, but today is March 28th, 2023. And this has been a project that's been about a week in the making uh, with God over uh, what is it to tabernacle with Yeshua? Uh, because in the last days, we heard that God's going to be re-erecting because it has fallen the tabernacle of David. And he had told me da the tabernacle of David is the beginning. It's it's the opening of the door to the Melchizedek priesthood. And so he's been really wanting to walk this out with me as to what does that mean um, in general? Uh, what, 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 what do we mean by the tabernacle of David that's going to be re-erected is just opening the door? Well, the tabernacle of David is essentially the heart that was after God, and that has fallen in the last days. And so I digress, but he's about to go into what it means to tabernacle with God like Yeshua did versus how David did. David was the start to it. And we've fallen so far that we don't even have the start to tabernacling with God anymore properly. So he wants to break down not only what did David do, many are, many are touching on what David did. And he had a heart after God. And I've already put something out, you know, um, detailing the, the magnificent relationship that he had with God with not backing down, neither God nor David backing down from their relationship with one another. But if David could do it perfectly, we wouldn't have needed Yeshua. And Yeshua would not be our example of how to live and abide with God, the Father, in union as one with him. And that's the point of what is this priesthood? Well, the priesthood is his kingly priesthood children, and they are going to tabernacle with the Father as Yeshua did. So I'm going to put this on viewing only, so hopefully I won't mess it up while I'm recording. And we're going to start with uh, the fact that this is a comprehensive but not a complete detailing of the lessons Yeshua taught us in his Gospel of Matthew. Uh, but it is what to what it's to be how it what it is to be under God's rule as a student and disciple of his way, as that was the beginning of what what being minded toward the priesthood is. And there's much to learn about discipline in here and what God's trying to convey about how his children are to be and what they are to learn. Tabernacling with the living God is disciplined work at a two-way relationship that puts God holy as most high within. And in this, hopefully we will see that the requirements and duties of priests are and will be uh, what they will be in order to rule and reign with him. For it'll only be his priestly kings that do. And I think that's important to make note of because he called us an order of a peculiar people of priests and kings, not priests or kings, priests and kings. So priestly kings, those will be the ones who rule and reign with them. And, and many have forgotten the priesthood entirely. They just went after the, uh, I'm equal to Christ in authority. And I'm like, well, are you? I mean, are you for real? Like, are you in him living straight out of his being, not yours, not your own rule, et cetera, and so on? Because as this says, they'll be the ones that are under the orders of Melchizedek and the high priest himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ. And see, if we're not actually under his rules and under his authority and his leading, we're not going to be doing anything with him that's in a leadership role. And I have on here some strong definitions that I want to break down. Let me just peek again, make sure the microphone is still on since it's all new. Um, I have Jesus in here and the definition being um, that his, his, uh, it's originally from the name Yehoshua. And, when, and then a lot of us know that, uh, that are familiar with any of the Hebrew. Um, but that, that, that name is what is meant for Jesus, Yehoshua. Now, Yehoshua comes from the word Joshua. And when you look up the word Joshua, it means Jehovah saved. Can we see now why his name is Jeho Jehoshua or Joshua at its root? Jesus is actually Jehoshua or, or, or Jehovah saved. 
Joshua. That's the meaning of Joshua. And Jehovah here is the self-existent or eternal one or the Lord. So can we see now is the self-existent eternal one who, who God, who saved that came as Joshua, Yehoshua, or Jesus. And that's why I want to put that in there because many people don't understand all of them. Matthew 3, 15 through 16. And Jesus answering said unto him, suffer it be so now for thus in this way or like manner, it becomes of us be suitable, proper fit or right to fulfill, which is cram like a net level up a measure, furnish, imbue, influence, satisfy, execute, finish, verify, accomplish, and complete. These are all strong definitions in here. All righteousness, Equity of character or actions and justifications. That's the Strong's. Then he suffered him. So let's read that again. For thus it becomes of us to fulfill all righteousness. And the definitions are right there. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. Note that all righteousness was fulfilled before this. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, Jehoshua, Yeshua, I put all the different spellings, Jehoshua, Yeshua, or Yeshua, made sure we understood that obedience to God the Father, the eternal one, was known to be honored and adhered to. He said it was proper, fit, and right to be baptized, but it brought him into fulfillment of righteousness, which by definition is equitable, decisive, judicial acquittal by Strong's definitions of justification. And righteousness means equitable or equal as that is the root definition of equitable in character and actions of God holy. Jesus taught that obedience to God, his ways and becoming equal in character and actions of God the Father is necessary and must be adhered to in obedience, coming into the fulfillment of the righteousness of God. And in doing so, this brought about the Father speaking abroad to all this is my son in whom I am very pleased. We ought to recall this as we come into understanding of what it is to be in the tabernacle with or tenting up in housing with in the temple of our person with the spirit of Yeshua, Jeho Jehoshua, Jesus now. Yeshua will make heeding the Father and his ways in person the utmost importance to follow in righteousness, to be in right standing with Yah, the Father. When the one tabernacles with Yeshua, he will follow in the Father's ways and lead and will gain the character of the Father himself, just as Yeshua did in his flesh life and still carries out today. Matthew 4.1 Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yeshua trusted the spirit of God and followed him no matter where he led him or unto what. And the one who tabernacles with the spirit of God under the lead of the high priest himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, will follow the lead of the spirit of God as well, adhering to the father. As Yeshua delegated all authority to the father in leading his life in earth and was trained up and tested out in all his leading. And then after accomplishing all he did, the father put all authority into his hand. This was an example to us. We will endure the same. We will be asked to follow the son as he followed the father. And the son will lead us into all the father's ways. And as the father leads, his spirit will bring us into all truth as he did with the son. The one walking and tabernacling with the son in the temple within man will ultimately know the spirit, the son, and the father. For son represents the father. The father raised the son by the spirit. And now the spirit is shed abroad to us all. We too will serve and know all three parts of God intimately and obediently. And we will be returned to their similitude or image within our man, inner man. The one who tabernacles with the living God, tabernacles with the high and holy one. The one who is the high priest, who raises us as little priests, holy and consecrated unto the Father. And he who tabernacles with the high holy one knows the Father, the Son, and the Spirit very well. Holy is his person, and priest is how he carries himself. And God is our authority over us. Raising us in his ways, the little priests will be as he is, for he is God and father of them in their form and ways, and they have been returned to his image. 
Matthew 4.10. Then Jesus said unto him, get hence, which means sink out of sight, retire, or go away, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship, which says, kiss like a dog licking his master's hand, crouch, prostrate oneself to homage to, reverence in adoration, the Lord, which means supreme authority controller, sir. Your God, supreme deity and magistrate, and only him shall you serve. When tabernacling with Yeshua, he will have you mindful that all principalities and powers submits to the most high and holy supreme deity. And as he lives and abides within us, and we have made him our God, Lord master of us for real in all our ways, all will be subject and brought under his authority through our vessel where the high and holy one indwells because he is the holy and supreme magistrate, that is the judge and say. Even the elements of wind were rebuked and obeyed by him later. And he is in us now. Magistrate, a first in rank or power, a chief ruler or prince. I'm going to edit this right here because it says one instead of on. Please excuse me. Magistrate, a first in rank or power, chief ruler or prince, and he is the highest magistrate. Matthew 4, 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, departed into Galilee, he departed into Galilee. Our Lord heard his cousin and forerunner with him, John, was cast into prison, and he went about doing father's business. He did not stop to interrupt what the father was leading him to do in order he would take pause at John's state, but instead forged forward on the journey father was leading him through. In the life of the priest of the order of Melchizedek, one tabernacling with the high priest himself, the priest will find himself obedient to the father, no matter what comes his way. The father leading them will oftentimes look and be perceived as contrary to what the carnal man would naturally do, but it is not the carnal nature the priest is obedient to, but to the very spirit and his nature. And in doing so, the priest will often walk offensively in the eyes of the carnal man, not appearing to live by the spirit of love himself and will be blamed as such. God does not move as we move. He sees far beyond what we in a carnal stance can see, and he will lead and care for each of his sheep. Messiah knew this and knew that the father was completing a mission with John, and that was specific to John's life. And those the father wanted him to reach in his metron of influence, and that was to some in prison. And Yeshua knew that. He will be tested we will be tested and tried and tempted to abandon God at times when God leads us into situations and happenings that we do not think we ought to have to go through. But God knows what he is doing. And if he has one or a million to reach by sending us into what we have perceived as treacherous waters, we will go. Yeshua went on collecting disciples as the father led him there instead of to John in that moment. And this is where the priest will be called to gather the students under his wings as well and assist the father in raising them up under his wings. The priest must first be sanctified and transfigured himself, reconfigured and cleansed himself in his garments, soul, and discipline. And then he will be called to make duplicates of this training that the Lord has accomplished in their life. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The priest will also be a preacher. The Lord told me the difference between teaching alone and praying alone is becoming a preacher. He said, preach is a teacher who prays. Preach, P-R and E-A-C-H from teach, pray and teach. Now that's cute to combine the spelling of those two words, but if we look more closely to the definition that he gave me concerning what is true prayer in his eyes, we can see that intercessory prayer for others is at the heart of the preacher. The priest will preach and with his teaching, he will pray the father on behalf of those he is teaching and raising up and thereby the priest will cover his young ones in the spirit and be interjecting himself into their spiritual lives himself by seeking the Father's will over their lives and calling it in. Preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand is to warn the people. God is near, and in warning them, God is now near to you all. He is calling them to turn away from whatever they were minded after and return to God. This will require discipling or teaching, as well as seeking the Father over their lives in intercessions. The priest, under the high priest himself, will teach pray, intercessions, 
preach the truth and its warnings and raise up the children in discipleship, exemplifying how to be and keep being as a child of the most high God. One moment. Matthew 4.23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. The disciple of Yeshua will be walking in the ways of Yeshua pertaining to his lesser works. He will be under the high priest who walks in the ways of holiness. As he does, he will exercise the authority of righteousness toward the unclean and the powers that keep people in bondage. The priest will walk in deliverance with God and will demonstrate Isaiah 61 in setting the captives free and binding up their hearts. Not only was he going about and teaching in, in the religious gathering place, Places, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God to them all, announcing God has arrived on scene, but he was exercising the authority and power of heaven over uncleanness. The priest being clean and righteous in the Lord will walk in the lesser works, meaning the works Yeshua already demonstrated in earth as common to the disciple, child servant of the most high God, and he will cleanse that which was previously unclean. The priest will walk in forgiveness of sins trespasses against the Lord. This is what heals the sick and delivers those in bonds and opens prison gates. Deliverance coupled with repentance and a handshake with the spirit of the living God. Like in Matthew 9 too, son be of good cheer, your sins be forgiven you. Then the high priest himself, living out of this lesser priest that is under him, will walk out his more than works as he so sees fit and co-labors with his vessel, according to the lead of the father through the son and spirit. Even the centurion servant healing was a lesser work as Yeshua already demonstrated healing over distance in the spirit by faith. Matthew 9, 1 through 8. And he entered into a ship, passing over, and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a sick man with the palsy lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore do you think evil in your hearts? For what is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, walk? But it is so that you may know that the Son of Man has power over earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go into your house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and gloried, glorified God who had given such power unto men. We will be called as priests and disciples to forgive men their trespasses legally with God by heaven and his lead and move in his authority and power within the earth realm. Because the sons of man, that is children born into this earth through the will of the father in all situations and his lead, have the power to forgive sins. As Yeshua came as a man born of a woman, hence his title when walking out these works as being a son of man, not the son of God. Yeshua came to demonstrate to us that we can and ought to walk in with the holy God and his leading. The priesthood will demonstrate the power authority in judicial decree from heaven's courts, mercy, forgiveness, and love to a people desiring to meet the holy living God and hopefully repent and be reconciled to him as well. And note that this is a man who walked, Yeshua walked in the priesthood first. He walked clean and sanctified. I sanctify myself for their sake, he said, you know, and, and as we remember that he was walking clean and holy with God. So as he did that, he was under the lead of what father, what father said and what father said to do and what he showed to do. So in that, he was in complete submission to the Father's will and was able to forgive the sins. Now, if a man walk clean with God in the same ways, and the Father's will is to forgive that man's sins or heal him and set him free, then that will take place, place through any man walking in the priesthood with Yeshua. Matthew 8, 3, 4, 34, and behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. 
The Lord and the Holy Spirit offended many, disrupted their lives, and didn't make their shady lifestyles easy when he was around. He either convicted them or oppressed their way of life, and most of the time they wanted him gone. This will often occur to the priest of the Lord in the order of Melchizedek too. Oftentimes the holy priest will be undesired to be around and to disrupt the evil powers that be and the puppet vessels they inhabit. A priest tabernacling with the spirit of the high priest himself will often offend those who are not tabernacling and abiding with his spirit at the helm within, ruling and reigning in holiness. And this will be demonstrated by hostility and a general disdain for his presence. The priest should not take this personally as they are snubbing and rejecting the very spirit and presence of God. And he did say, in that case, dust your feet off of the matter and people. Rejection will be common in the priest's life. But so will miraculous adoption of lost sheep into the fold, for Father will guide the priest to them. It's just that on the way, the priest will encounter resistance. Like the Pharisees who sought to murder Messiah, the holy priest in this realm will meet their share of the, we will re meet our share of the religious folk that walk with Antichrist spirit, just like the Pharisees of old, and will seek to destroy the priest, all the same in many different ways and manners. They are led of Satan, and they believe that they are right with God in doing his bidding all the while walking in a malice and violence against the kingdom of God. Matthew 9, 10, and it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in his in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Many red light district folk will be in need of Messiah too, and we are not to shun them away. God in Yeshua was oftentimes reaching the undesirables because they were only undesirable to the religious, not to God. God was calling many sinners to reconcile with him, and as Paul put it at one time, he was chiefest of them all. We must remember we too will be called to reach some of the harsh looking, speaking and acting folk called into the risque areas of life. And in doing so, we are not to judge them by their former sins, but see that they are called to repent and reconcile with the father. We are to go by the lead of the spirit and whom he sends us to, we will always be will always be unto the oppressed because they're in need of him to be reconciled to him and set free and forgiven. Even in the body of Messiah, we are called to heal and deliver the oppressed. The priest will be practiced in the discipline of forgiveness and mercy, which will be triumphing over judgment. Matthew 9, 12. But when Jesus heard that, he said to them, they who, who behold do not need a physician, but they who are sick do. Many are sick in one manner or another and have need of the love, forgiveness, power, and mercy of God to set them free. The priest with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, will be called to walk in his authority and duty and set captives free, whoever and wherever they be, and the Father leads them, and the Father leads them to it. Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into this harvest. The Lord is ultra compassionate, a hard worker and willing, but like him, when he was but one person in one body, the amount of people that needed God was great and it, and it moved him with compassion as he sought to help them. We too will be called to assist many as the high priest within us still seeks to do the same. We will be called to assist them in their deliverance, reconciliations to God, sanctification in, in discipleship, and thereby we will assist God in gathering more harvesters as he will turn them about as well and deploy them into the field. But we will have to be out there preaching the good news of the gospel to them, gaining them in reconciliations to the Most High God and Father once again through Messiah. And in doing so, setting them free and allowing God to unite with one more soul and child of his 
as we do this, the laborers become greater and so does the harvest. The priest will be a harvester. He will assist the spirit himself in adopting his children. Can we see how the spirit and how Yeshua mothered and gathered the little ones unto him as to the father? The priest will gather the lost sheep and shepherd them up in the ways of God, discipling them and making more duplicate children of God inside each and every man with the Holy Spirit of God. The priest walks in all the offices of the Lord. Yeshua walked in them all, and so will the priest with him and under him, teacher, pastor, which is shepherd, apostle, evangelist, prophet, for all the offices, all the ways of God and his governance, governance, which are offices, will be required of the priest in a knowledge of basis and practice. He will have to be trained and exercised in them all, at least a little bit, as to be able to allow the high priest himself to step into any of those roles whenever he needs to, as each person and situation will be different. The priest will also have to call others into their positions within the calling God has for them, working discernment with God over each case. And in order to do that, one must have some basic knowledge and experience in each of these roles to recognize other people's callings and strong suits. He will be tested, tried, and apprenticing with the high priest for quite some time. In all the ways he walked, he will be called to walk the same path because he has need of a vessel to do it again. And that is speaking of Yeshua, the high priest. Matthew 11, four, Jesus answered four through six. And Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again, those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf are the deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whoever shall not be offended in me. Those who walk in the tabernacle experience with Yeshua will have to be well disciplined in that God will require us to be strong on behalf of the throne and for our brethren. When they are weak, weary, and discouraged, possibly even afraid, God will ask of us to encourage them, remind them of who God is, who we are in him, and what the mission is. It's not always going to be easy, and even the best of us get discouraged, scared, or weak and weary, and we need regrouping and reminding. So the priest under and with Yeshua in the order will be an encourager, a teacher, a reminder or recaller, and will edify the brethren in their callings and walk with the Lord. Yeshua very much parented the sheep, a good shepherd, guards, feeds, teaches, admonishes and corrects, wrangles them, doctors them, stops squabbles between youngins and grooms the sheep. We are called with him to do the same for the other brethren that he has put in our charge. And since he, the good shepherd, is in us and with us, he will raise us up in all his mantles. If you desire and are called to the priesthood order. Once again, he will have us taught and exercised in all the disciplines of the Lord, pastor, evangelist, teacher, apostle, which is foundation restorer and prophet, as well as any other leadership role or quality he sees fit, example, counselor. In the chapter above with John imprisoned, Jesus did not panic or become distraught. He knew Father was doing something specific in John's life and ministry. And oftentimes we will see in the lives of others or ourselves how incredibly arduous the journey laid before them looks. But we will not be called to see our perspective, but to ask, Father, what is your will here? And what would you have me to do, if anything? Because we will be called to encourage them in addition to seeking Father's will in the situation they are facing. But sometimes he's reaching others in prison by sending his faithful servant to them, whereas they otherwise would perish in the way with no intercessor when Father wanted to reach them. Many times what we perceive as unfair or unjust or harsh may very well be those things but it is also a ministry calling to reach others. If we can see past where we are and how hard it is, we will be called to walk those paths ourselves in the order. And we will be called to assist and encourage those going through it as well and remind them that the Father and the Son know what they are doing. John was highly beloved of God, a friend of the Lord, but he still had to go through what he did and for good and godly reasons. And many were reached in his selflessness. We will be called to be strong internally in our disciplined souls, gathering strength from the Lord as we will hear 
about and deal with a lot of harsh happenings that our brethren must endure in that God is maturing us just as much as them. And he is encouraging us to lay it at his feet in intercessions and the breakings of the heart unto him in that much is accomplished and our brethren can endure until the end of the matter one more day matthew eleven twenty five. at that time jesus answered and said i thank you O father lord of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto babes we are very much parenting or nannying God's little ones when we walk in the priesthood. He has need of this, as he himself was the parenting role provider when he was incarnate in his own body. Well, now he needs another vessel to do it again through us. And if we are willing, he wills to do so. We will be watching those with religious spirits balk at us, revile us, and even have hatred for us, all while claiming his name, Christian. We will have to endure this as they did this to Christ and his disciples of old, and he is the same spirit within us alike even now. But in that process, we can see that while the pharisaical hypocrites walk undisciplined by the Lord because they won't have it with their hyper grace, we will be the babes who get the incredible intimacy and revelation. He will show himself to us and reveal great and mighty things that the others do not know of. The prudent he speaks of, are the educated, doctorate-holding Pharisees of our time, just like they were doctorates of the law back then, as he called them. And they see themselves to be educated, refined, and wise. In that, they will attempt to assassinate the true Holy Spirit again with the Antichrist spirit in them, along with the religious Jezebel adulterous spirit, as they set themselves unknowingly against the Holy Spirit of God in man just as they did when the Holy Spirit was in the Son of Man in his very own flesh back then, how much more so now when he is in another, namely us. God knows what he's doing. And even though the persecution will be strong, he separates goats from sheep while doing this, because you see, goats don't want to be disciplined, and sheep do. Disciplined is highly trained under the hand of the Lord, refined in return to being like God inside. And a goat couldn't care less about that. In God's fold, as he has slipped in with the sheep and disguises himself to be one, he has food, shelter, protection, safety in numbers, or so he thinks. He will remain here within the flock until he is found, and then the separation process begins, and the goats are removed from the sheep flock because they are indeed not sheep. God only came for his sheep, and they know his voice. Another they will not follow. But the goats, they don't care who feeds them, grooms them in their ways or how they are provided for. So long as they have no loyalty or they have no loyalty or integrity of godly character, they make excuses, cheat, steal, beg and borrow to get what they want. And they don't care about the other guy. Goats will be removed from the house of the Lord because they will not conform or be under authority. They will not be returned and reconciled into the similitude of God holy once again. And they will pay the ultimate price for that rebellion and stubbornness, stiff neckedness with their hardened hearts that will not attain the attributes of the holy God into themselves. God is intimate with those who love, honor, and cherish him as they desire to return to him in all their ways. These are the sheepfold of the Lord. But there are infiltrates he has to deal with. And if they will not be converted and become sheep, they will be ejected from the fold and they will remain in the hand of Satan and go where he goes in the end. They are blind and deaf to the lead of the Lord and they will stay that way without the conviction of the Holy Spirit and without a true demonstration of the real sheep unto them to see the difference and believe. And those are the priests. Matthew 12, 1 through 2. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of the corn to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, behold, your disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. The pharisaical, the religious spirited folk who believe themselves to be wise in the law, but fail to recall that the Lord said the law is for man, not the man for the law, meaning it was designed to show us how far we've fallen from God's image and all the areas we ought to learn from in order to be disciplined and return to his image. But he canceled, acquitted, abolished the need for us to do it without error, meaning must stick to it at all times. He gave us a pass on that when a greater good 
superseded that of the old law order and precedent. Here we see that the law of Sabbath was made so man would reverence God, not pursue other things like work and give God and himself rest together in communion. It was very much for regrouping and recalling what and who is most important in life with God and work without rest and recuperation is not God's way. So here the religious may say that is unlawful to do and yet fail at the greater need of the man right then and there sustenance to survive, regroup, recoup, and rest, which is technically the definition of Sabbath <laughs> with God. They failed to see that the feeding of the sheep is necessary if we desire for the sheep to live and prosper. And the good shepherd was providing for them, as was the father right then and there, but the religious could only see violation. They could not see father providing for his children, nor did they walk in his love of the brethren, but instead walked in contempt for them and assumed the role of accuser of the brethren. We will be called to walk in the attributes of discerning attributes, discernment of the spirit and ways of the Lord at his leading, his will and his perspective. Goats don't care about the sheep. They care about whether or not they are fed, provided for, look and sound wise, walk in comforts and carry authority. The disregard, they disregard God's children and they disregard God himself in his person, in their inner man conduct as they refuse to be conformed into his image and conduct within. Matthew 25 through 28. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils. This fellow does not cast out devils, does these works by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, means working with Satan then, he's divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. The religious spirited folk who claim to be the children of Yah will come at the priests of the Lord in persecutions because the devil who runs with them comes at God himself through us. They will say we work with devils, but they themselves do as they come against the living God himself. We will do the works of the Lord by the Lord as the Lord leads in our lives. But the religious spirit pharisaical who walk in cessationism, which is no works of the Holy Spirit in our giftings and anointings, will accuse God in his man once again of coupling with Satan, all the while not knowing they already have. They will not be able to see that the works of reconciliation unto the father are the works of the father in general and his spirit is present when it's taking place and it clearly is his will to restore if restorations are taking place the devil doesn't care to restore us like a withered hand or a leg that needs to be regrown he's trying to kill us in all, all our ways sorcery and magic will take place again in the counterfeit moves but only the true work of the holy spirit reconciles the man inside when the lord's work is present the Lord will not do a show for the sake of a show. He will do wonders and miracles for the goal of reconciling that man to himself. We can know the works of God if repentance, reconciliation, sanctification, and new creatures in Christ are taking place at the same time as healings and deliverance. For it is the father who desires to make himself known to that man right then and there. And in that reconciling and revealing, miracles take place as he reveals himself. Miracles or wonders outside of people meeting the holy living God in reconciliations is just magic. Devils can do that. They're spirit beings who can bend the material world. But when God holy shows up, man meets God as creator and will never be the same. Father's intention is to gather his child and reveal himself, his nature, his love, his restoration to these men and women and children. The healing is the benefit the deliverance from under the thumb and influence of his enemy in their lives and real connection with these people is the goal. Matthew 13, 34, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them. When tabernacling unto the father through and with the son, priests will learn to speak in ways in which the sheep understand. If he must, he will often speak in parables or easily understood stories and similes for comprehension of what is spoken and conveyed. 
if we are teaching a thing and the receiving students of that thing do not grasp the concepts, precepts, or premise of that teaching, we have failed to teach a thing altogether. The priest will be taught of the Lord first to understand his parables in scripture and the reasonings in which he used this particular parable when he did. And unto these people, understanding the why of what God does is just as important as the what of what God does. His reasons matter and ours will too. For instance, why the parable of the sower or better yet, the parable of the soils? Well, our Lord was speaking to a farming people who understand that the condition of the soil matters unto how the seed will take. Whether or not the seed planting is successful was greatly determined by the condition of the soil itself. In this way, he spoke of the condition of the heart and whether the seed planting of the Lord would take in a particular soil or person's heart was the heart soft toward God or rocky and dry and hard meaning resistant, was there pre preparations to the soil to make it a hospitable environment, a welcome environment for the planting of the Lord there? And then he spoke of dirty birds, demons that would snatch it up or simply the soil was not prepared ground, no fertility, no readiness, no proper essentials needed for long sustainability to receive the seed planted to reap a harvest from. And this is all talking about discipline. There was no discipline in these people to follow his orders and authority to be reconformed. There are reasons we will be asked to make things A, B, C simple to our students. And it will be parables that are arranged and delivered in areas the assembly are familiar with, like going into a fishing town and speaking on fishing analogies or equestrian areas and speaking of the relationship between man and his horse, etc., and so on. Matthew 13, 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares. There are going to be times when God works through us and speaks a thing. The others are not going to understand, grasp or catch the first time through. God doesn't mind explaining a matter to us over again so that we can comprehend and retain his teachings. In fact, he desires that we comprehend his teachings so that we retain them. Oftentimes in the life of the priest, we will be misunderstood and seem strange or different or hard to take or understand at times, but the priest will not let this bother them. They will seek for all men to understand what the spirit is saying and conveying. The priest will work with the father to condescend down the material or reiterate it again in a different manner so that the audience will comprehend and thereby retain what father is showing and telling. For we cannot move forward to enlighten others of what God is revealing if we cannot grasp what he's conveying in a teaching. We will be required to do our best to reiterate, change the format of the release of revelation in a different way, and perhaps again and again in different places in ways that are relevant to the receiver. God did not get upset that the disciples didn't get it. In fact, he wanted them to understand. So oftentimes, Behind the scenes, we may be asked to clarify what we had previously spoken or shared and taught. This is good. It means there's a desire on the part of the student that the disciples under the priest want to gain understanding. It will be the priest under Yeshua learning from his ways and what he did and does even now to reiterate a lot, retelling the teaching in a new way so that the person can grasp it. Without being able to grasp a thing, we cannot hold that thing, which is retention. The priest will work in the area of teaching and helping the others to comprehend and retain the understanding because he will be sending them out to teach the same things to others eventually. And if they comprehend it not, if they retain it not, they will not be able to deliver it to anyone else. Matthew 13, 51. Jesus said unto them, have you understood all these things? They said unto him, yes, Lord. Matthew 13, 57. And they were offended in him, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and his own house. I understood the Lord was talking about the people who knew him the best as how he grew up in his hometown and amongst those people. But I want to give us further deeper revelation here. He was also speaking of the people of God, the nation of Israel, as well as in his house, his body of believers. 
The temple of God is within man now, and the house of the Lord is the same. It is a body of believers who are the body of Christ in the earth, and our most resistant people against us, the prophets, priests, apostles, etc., will come from our very brethren. Our house is the tabernacle of God, and the temple is the house. We will be fought in disbelief the hardest in the church. The temple house place the people inhabit and dwell with the Lord, or are supposed to. They will come against the people flowing with the Holy Spirit the hardest. It will not be the straight-up heathen atheists that deny God in us the most. It will be those who call themselves God's people, but of whom could not recognize the Spirit of God if he stood before them just like they did to him when he came in the form of Yeshua in his time. It is the same spirit in us now. And when tabernacling with him inside of us, we will face persecutions and unbelief and doubt in the pharisaical religious spirited people of the world that call themselves Christians. Matthew 14, 13 through 23, and this is pertaining to John the Baptist's assassination. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him out on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. He healed their sick. And when he was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away so that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. You give them to eat. And they said to him, we have but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break them and gave the loaves to his disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. And they did eat all, and they all did eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments and remained 12 baskets full. And all they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening came, he was there alone. When Jesus heard about his cousin, disciple, and forerunner for the kingdom of God had been executed, he departed away in solitary desert place. We too will be called to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit of God when others cannot understand why we are doing odd things, namely to be alone with the Father. In that leading of the Holy Spirit to the obscure place of the desert, multitudes followed him there. And as they followed him, he realized their maladies and was moved with compassion to heal them. We, the priesthood, will and are called to preach good tidings to the meek, heal the brokenhearted, and set free those in bondage, chains, bars of imprisonment, and open ears and eyes of the deaf and blind. Priests will be required to make clean the sinners and those in bondage. This is the duty of the priest, and then announce them clean in many ways, as in the days of old. When it was late, and the disciples wanted to disperse the crowd so that they could go and eat, the Lord told the disciples to feed them themselves. We will be called to not only feed the crowds the truth and the presence of the Lord himself, but we will be called to walk in signs and miracles that make the unsaved or the unbelieving wonder of the grace, God, love, mercy, and provision of God. We will be called to do miracles and provide for father's children in this earth, just as the high priest demonstrated whilst he himself walked this earth as our example. And note, looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the pieces to multiply and share by reverencing the father before all the people. And then he sent the students away to finish up with the people himself so he could remain with father alone, departing before departing to meet them on the other side. I believe several things here. He wanted to finish up with the people himself, many reasons why he might have wanted to do that. They were all there for him, so to speak. As well, he wanted to be alone with Father, not just for praying to him and communing with him at peace and in solitude, though he did want that, I'm sure, but also to receive his next instructions and orders. Likely, it was then that the Father showed him the storm or prepared him for its coming and why, and it was likely there that he recovered from his grief with John and readied himself to carry on in the mission and purpose of his calling here. We are to learn from his example here. It is good to fellowship and commune and teach others, our brethren, 
but nothing will ever be more important than that alone time with our creator and father. He is our leader in all ways and Yeshua demonstrated this very well. We will be called to get alone with him as well through surrender to Yeshua unto the father. Yeshua is now interceding for us, for us, with us, and the high priest will require of us to pray in solitude with God the Father as well. And in this, we will receive our next instructions through the Son and unto our orders or mission. He will give us strength, direction, provision, and love to do so. The priest will carve out time, sacred time with the Father, the Son, and their Holy Spirit. The priest will walk in miraculous signs of the presence of God in their lives as they honor God wholly. And God the Father will draw the people to himself right through those priests. So be prepared for Father to send people your way for himself to minister to them as he has need. Solitude with God will be a requirement and a necessity in the life of the priest under the order of Melchizedek and the high priest, Yeshua HaMashiach. Matthew 14, 28 through 33. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come unto you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, you of little faith, wherefore, why did you doubt? And when they came into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying, of a truth, you are the son of God. Peter knew to ask the Lord to order him or bid him to come as he was his master. And so Peter walked on water because he believed Yeshua to be the son of God, not just the son of man. But at some point, Peter saw the natural world and its loud forces voices. And he began to fear the storm and not the Lord as most powerful and high ruling at that time. The priest in the order of Melchizedek under Yeshua, the high priest, will be required to know whom he serves at all times. And he will be called to stand in the faith of who God is and to forsake the world and all its loud screaming forces and to walk in faith not by sight and sound with the unseen, all-powerful, high-ruling, almighty God. It's when Peter lost that focus, the focus of who Yeshua was and what all he was in control of and capable of, that the loud voice of the world crept back in and caused Peter to doubt. It was not that he doubted he could walk on water or that the elements could be mutated to hold him. He took his heart focus and his thoughts off the Lord and who he was slash is. And in that, he fell. He sank because his heart focus sank first, coming off of the Lord God Almighty under the Most High Father God. And in that, he fell from that grace walk with the Lord. And the world and its loud voice became the strongest voice and the master inside of Peter at that time. But he remembered the Lord at the last second and he called out to him, the Lord is faithful and he wishes for none to perish, but that all would repent and return to him to be saved. And Peter did just that right there in that boat and in that storm event. We are to learn from Peter and when we doubt and fall to return to him, recall all he is and re-engage with him right there in truth. Because the truth is, he's the last say, the almighty say, and the high ruling one. Nothing stands between him and man unless man allows it to. Don't doubt who he is and he will be faithful to be himself in your life. For he is, for he is the high ruling, almighty, powerful, loving, provisionary father, yours. And nothing is greater than him. Matthew 15. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition, tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the command of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and mother, and he who curses father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, whoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatever you might be profited by me. And but who does not honor his father or mother, he shall be free. Thus, you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, Esaias or Elijah, 
did well in prophesying of you saying, these people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, but honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, they worship me teaching for doctrine, commandments of men. That's leadership of men and not God's leading ways. Pharisees, once again, I love how God will follow up a question with a question. We understand why he does this, yes? Because he's attempting to get man to use his senses. In this case, he must draw the parallel of hypocrisy out. His men have failed to wash their hands before eating. Do we think they don't know this is the law? Or do we think they have forgotten the law or couldn't for some reason? Because the law was impossible for the average man to fulfill, which is why Yeshua came and fulfilled it flawlessly. And so the Lord was making a point. And I believe he made a greater point even in this. For his disciples forgot to wash hands, but the Pharisees forgot dishonor of the parents forgave dishonor of the parents and allowed it to be a blessing at all the same time. Parent honor is important because God is our parent figure. And here the Pharisees were saying, no worries, find honor in me, your child. You, you are blessed because of me. And it doesn't matter if, if I honor you, my parents, I'm blessed and free from that. What? Where do you see the greater dishonor toward God in the lack of hand washing or in the dishonoring of the parent role, as well as making the child the leader over the parents, cocky and irreverent and honoring himself in self-worship, which is pride, and then calling that blessed and free from the law? Can anyone say Satan's way since his fall from being ruled by God, the parent who made him? That's an example of hyper grace. We can transgress now all we want. The price has been paid and applied to me, all the while never really reconciling with God, which is coming under his authority and living with him how he says, not any old way we think is right in our own eyes. Scripture's pretty clear about that being jacked up, falling, fallen thinking and computing inside fallen man, Proverbs 21, two through four. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. It's literally Satan's way. And man is like, yeah, I can still walk and sup with Satan. Hyper grace, y'all. And is completely deceived and will hear, depart from me. You who would not stop sinning and transgressing me and my way. You who worked iniquity your whole lifetime. I don't know you. We were never covenanted in marriage in any way. The priest will encounter these hypocrites and their philosophies and practices. We will be called to be just as shrewd as our Lord too. We will be called to see the hypocrisy and call them on it. It is not easy to walk with God as God is, but it is required of the priest. Have we seen now what it is to become priestly, holy as the Lord is holy? It is to walk with him, like him, as our own person, reasoning with the mind of Christ, led of the mind and heart of Christ. It is to surrender to God fully, to be as he is in his person, to walk in the order of Melchizedek. Hypocrites are to be exposed when they challenge God, his way, his person, and his order. There will be a call to walk this out on an individual scenario basis by the order of Melchizedek. The world will hate us as we re represent the Lord God holy. And the apostate church is the mistress in this marriage covenant to God. We will be called to call a spade a spade when they call themselves of God holy, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Matthew 16, 1 through 6. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it'll be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, the weather patterns, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Oh, that's because they're not right with God in spirit is what he's saying. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and there shall be no sign given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples came to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Note. That God detailed here that the religious spirited folk of the world today who speak one thing but do not live in spirit and truth with the Lord will demand of the true children of the Lord to show a sign to them. And yet the Lord just called that tempting the Lord. 
we ought to note that they will tempt us. And in that, they will show this tempting us by requiring us to do something at their command. But we are commanded of the Lord only. Here, he speaks of the pompous and ignorant ways of the religious folk, the Pharisees and Sadducees of the times. We still have them symbolically in parallel even now. They were able to see the signs of the weather above in the clouds, but because they know not God holy in truth and in spirit, they were unable to know God's timetable patterns and signs. Please make note of this. As a religious folk who persecute God's true children this day, also ask for you to prove God to them, which is the definition of walking by sight and senses in the material and not by faith. In this, you will know them. And God calls them wicked and adulterous because they are cheating on him and his spirit and running with antichrist, yet perceive it not. We will be intermingling with them. This is the way of the Lord as he walked this earth incarnate, and it will be our path as well. He tells them, I will give you a sign, but it will only be the sign of Jonah. Do we remember what happened to Jonah and why? Jonah was wicked and rebellious against the leadership of the Lord. He disobeyed, asserted his own will, and refused to obey him in that the sign to the Pharisees will be, and you too shall be swallowed up in your disobedience, wickedness, and adultery. That is the sign, as that was the sign Jonah received when he was swallowed of the whale too. The Pharisaical folk, or the hypocrites who speak a thing yet live another, will be swallowed up of the whale of their own leading and their own will, just the same, the whale of a lie they are living. And the priest in the order of Melchizedek will have to bring heavy warnings just like this and watch it all happen as it has been for millennia. The leaven is the mixture that perverts and grows. This is what leaven does in bread. It is mixed in, compromises the dough and grows and converts the dough into something else. And I'm going to break here as it's been a one hour now in this recording. And I'm going to do this in a part two. So please excuse me here while I stop the recording and upload this and then work on recording part two.